is AI a bad thing? I think one of my major themes has always been the importance of seeing both sides of an argument. And to that end, I think it would be in poor taste to say that artificial intelligence is a negative. It's a new thing. Certainly something that didn't exist a few years ago. And it's on track to dramatically change the way our lives and our society look. And I think there's a lot of problems that are worth talking about related to it. Such as the fact that the better AI gets and the more available it becomes, the easier it is to replace actual ingenuity, actual effort, and human creativity with something that doesn't really involve a human element. Some people argue that AI images and a lot of things of that nature are a negative because it's not really a computer creating something new as much as it is a computer searching through a lot of human-made art and then sort of taking a composite of that, stitching it together. And so in a way, AI art is a lot of bits and pieces of something real that are stitched together so that maybe one might say AI art is theft. And I don't know to what degree that's fair. I think it's probably reasonably fair in the world we live in to say that that's true. But the reality is that the greater problem is not that AI is stealing from human creators to, cr to make its own collages. It's that AI is on the verge of replacing human creativity. It was one thing when maybe somebody would cheat on a test. They'd copy something out of a book. Or maybe somebody would do a Photoshop and put a lot of effort into finding some different pictures and stitching bits and pieces together to create something that looks like a real photograph, but it's actually fake. And yet, those manual sort of actions still required the human element of figuring out how to be creative, figuring out how to be sneaky, figuring out how to make that achieved, achieved result. It, it was different than just typing into an AI prompt box, I want this or that. I want you to write me a resume. I want you to write me a letter of recommendation. I want you to create a photo that looks like a certain specific thing I'm going to describe. So we're, we're stifling human creativity while we're also at the same time creating a situation where it's easier than ever to propagate things which are not true. And it seems like people have a great propensity to believe lies. It's in our nature, it seems, to be rather gullible. So when you throw in AI generation of text and art, there's a very real question that comes up in this, which is, at what point does the fake stuff out number the real stuff? 
at what point is there more AI generated stuff out there than there is human creative, create, created stuff? At what point does stuff that's fake, which is presented as real, artwork that's AI generated is conveyed as human made, photographs that are fake, that are presented as real stories that are ai written but are presented as being human creations at what point does that fakeness create a society which is completely overcome with essentially fraudulent creations that replace and stymie true human creativity. These are things that are going to be a problem in the future, most likely. I do think that right now the AI craze, it's taking the internet by storm, all of the crazy AI generated art that people are making, all of the furor over AI stuff. I think, I think it'll come to an end to a point. I think with all things that are new and shiny, it's a bubble and eventually every bubble pops. And then people kind of come back to earth and they return to reality and life goes on. But it doesn't change the fact that AI is an upward surge, a trend which will have its resets. It'll have its cycles of meeting resistance. But ultimately, long term, it's probably not going away. Kind of like online shopping. It's had its ups and downs. And it's probably not going to replace brick and mortar shopping. But it's also probably never going to go away. And so life is forever changed by the introduction of an online marketplace. So what do we do? What do we do about all of the fakeness that's in the world? I think what we need to do is make a point To be authentic. And I'm going to pivot just a little bit to a seemingly unrelated topic, but I think it is kind of connected, and that is the topic of honesty. If you made a promise that you were never going to tell a lie again, that you were going to live your life genuinely and honestly, and commit yourself to that spirit, how would your life be better? I think as we have more and more opportunities, whether it's social media or AI chatbots, whatever it is, when we have opportunities to be disingenuous, when we have opportunities to present something fake as if it were real, when we have the opportunity to hide behind some sort of a social media profile or some sort of a disingenuous thing that we've conjured up or to just be candid and honest and frank. Let's choose the honest path. And when we consider all of the different things we encounter in life, let's be critical enough not to automatically assume that things are exactly as they appear. Because quite often there's lies conveyed as truth. There's disingenuous things that we are sold as if they were real. And so it often makes sense to 
return to that notion that if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. If something seems a little bit off, it probably is. And if something feels a little bit like cheating, if it feels a little bit sketchy, it probably is. I gotta tell you, it doesn't matter to me how much you tell me that it's okay to use a chat bot to write a resume or a chat bot to send an email to somebody. I think the right way to go about it is to use your own personal creativity. If you're going to write a book, don't use AI prompts to write a book that you're going to try to sell as a creative work of your own. Just use discretion. And it's been said that discretion is the better part of valor. And if that's true, then I think we all need to take a pause and ask ourselves whether we're living a life that's honest and whether we are consuming things that are honest and true in their spirit. And when you really live life by that standard, then I think it gets a bit easier to make judgment calls about what is trustworthy and what's real and maybe what's what's fake and what's a boundary that probably shouldn't be crossed. As with all tools, artificial intelligence, social media, the internet, computers, gaming, online shopping, mobile phones, so many different things that change the way we interact with society and with the world. It's not so much those things that are bad. It's when we use those things as a replacement for having good character, as a replacement for putting in genuine effort. When we use the tools in our arsenal as an easy way to tell lies or to conceal the truth of who we are. Anytime you conceal the truth of who you are, that is going to lead to a bad end. Anytime you consume things that you know don't feel right, it's probably not going to lead to a good end. You know, I think about things like a lot of cryptocurrencies out there and a lot of get rich quick schemes that you might encounter. And there's so many things in the world where you look at it and you think, well, that sounds really good, looks really good. But if I'm honest, it just doesn't seem to quite add up. And it's probably better in a world where it's so easy to make trickery look real, to stick to fundamentals, things that have always endured, that probably always will, and uh, don't necessarily jump on every single bandwagon, because sometimes it's better to, it's better to, well, as Warren Buffett said, invest in socks, underwear, candy, Coca-Cola, because you know what? They might not be the sexiest things in the world, but everyone's going to always need underwear. And people will probably keep on drinking Coca-Cola no matter what change happens in the world. So, be careful about jumping on new bandwagons just because something's new, something's hot on the scene. It's okay to have reservations. And even in a world which is very modern, 
I still think there's wisdom in just trusting your discretion. Trusting your judgment. And following your heart. And probably wouldn't be terrible to, you know, maybe read a physical book once in a while. It is interesting, though, how much has changed, isn't it? Like even in just a few years, how much has changed? So I think we as people probably are poorly suited to adapting to so much change so quickly. I often wonder what it all means. I think it's crazy, isn't it? How we, you know, a hundred years ago, we barely invented the car and airplane and now here we are playing playing video games that are so real that they're almost indistinguishable from reality sometimes and we're living in this modern world that's so fast paced that we're launching spaceships and we have high speed internet Makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? How did we get here? Just don't know. But, we don't have to have the answer to everything. Sometimes it's just more about being a good steward of what you have. And, uh... Simple values usually aren't too hard to understand. They're just hard to put into practice. And we don't really have to have all the answers. It's kind of like there's people who they go to school and they become really, really successful at something that they studied to be. They've got a degree in something, but then you find out that they can't even survive in just everyday life. Like they can't write their name legibly, they're not literate, they're not able to function in society very well, but they're good at some obscure skill. And it's, it's just, uh, I guess emotional intelligence maybe is what it is. It's that you can be, you can be smart, but that doesn't make you wise. And, uh, well, sometimes the, the tortoise beats the hare because the hare is running all over every which, which way and it can't figure out where it wants to go. And it's got a lot of potential, but it doesn't have a lot of discipline. So if you just sort of plod along and you uh, use common sense... Maybe you wind up doing better in the end than people who are super high powered and always chasing something new, but not really particularly wise or particularly well versed in the more timeless fundamentals. It does seem like the more the more things change, the more it's important to stay true to a certain foundational set of, of legacy things. You know, like some things they just don't change. And you can you can point out a lot of change in the world, and there is a lot of change in the world, but the reality is that Timeless values don't ever really go out of style. And if anything, they become more valuable because they become more in demand. Kind of like how records, vinyl records, we all thought they were going to be a thing of the past. And now, find vinyl records for sale again because people think they're cool. And 
people get sort of a sense of nostalgia out of it. So. They didn't go away after all. So, even in a world filled with AI and computer generated stuff, I still think there's a there's def definitely a place for for the human element and for just good old fashioned discretion. Not to say that we can't have fun with the tools that we are given. Not to say we can't enjoy and make the best of life with all of the fancy and colorful things that come along. It's just, I think when people get all excited and they say it's time to, you know, jump up and down about something, you don't necessarily have to jump so high that you forget where you came from. Anyway, good luck on your adventure. What do you think about AI? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? I don't know. It's definitely something worth thinking about, though, isn't it? Anyway, until next time. Thanks for watching.